World Cup just a couple of weeks away, and the U.S. men's national team has released its roster, the 26-man roster featuring the usual headliners like Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams. But there were some notable names that you will not see here. Jack Steffen, Ricardo Pepe. These are some of the uh, goalkeepers and defenders. They're currently breaking all this down right now on the In Soccer We Trust YouTube page. Let's dip into the reaction for just a few minutes. But still, to fall that far behind an Ethan Horvath or, or, or Sean Johnson, to me, is a bit bizarre because it feels like maybe you've wasted opportunities to get Sean Johnson more games. I or agree. to get Ethan Horvath more games over the time to know these guys are international ready. Yeah, for me, Horvath, in some ways, is probably our number three because Sean Johnson actually got one of the friendlies in our last six friendlies against Uruguay, and he made right. a couple of hell of saves to keep us in that one. And and so and, and uh, he's been solid for NYCFC, and he, he, he's he got that clutch gene that I really like. He steps up and, and makes big plays when he needs to. So I'm not scared to have shocked? Sean Johnson. Are you I, shocked? I, I'm shocked that Zach Steffen isn't in because... We have dedicated so much time to him. He does tick a box that Greg likes. You have a ball-playing goalkeeper who, yes, I feel like he made that mistake for Man City in the uh, U.S. No, no, I almost called it the U.S. Open Cup. The FA Cup for May, you know, in the semifinal, and, and that led to a goal, ultimately led to the loss for City. And he took a lot of heat for that and then ultimately made a move to Burrow to to now take continually take more heat. But the expectations on him feel a little extreme at times, but he's, not, you mean, he's coming from Manchester City. I get it. 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 And he's also the number one at that time for the U.S. So you got to be lights out in every yeah. single facet of the game. And he just seemed to be lacking confidence. But it's one of those things. We've had this conversation before. When your players are not feeling confident, isn't that the time to put your arm around them and say, hey, actually, I do believe in you. I think you're capable. And now it's like we've backed away completely from Zach Steffen. Like, peace out, buddy. Thanks for everything. And, and he's, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, but, but it's, it's not even a confidence thing, Jimmy. He's playing. It's not like you can't be a goalkeeper and be not confident. You might but not I, be in the best form of your okay. life, but he's playing every game. I'm not and he saying was him. And he came back. I'm saying our, our, the confidence of the coaches in him. Okay. Let, yeah, yeah. let less sack and more our, our confidence in him, or at least our coaching staff's confidence in him. So, yeah. I, I'm are we surprised. dumb, Jimmy? I'm are surprised. we dumb? Are we dumb? Are you and I dumb? Because we spend all of our time talking about. Who's the third goalkeeper? Zach Steffen wasn't even in the conversation because he's been a part of it. And I don't believe that anybody, for what they did, and when Greg Berhalter again said, uh, Josh Sargent played in the Premier League last year, like, that was last year. That was last right, year. Right, 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 right. What does that have to do with this year? Is he scoring in the championship this year? Yes, he is. Does that warrant him to be called into the national team and potentially make the World Cup squad? Absolutely. But what does last year have to do with it? Right. What does last year have to do with it? Like, that, sure. when I hear those kinds of things, I start to think, wow, we are willing to, and, and again, I think Josh Arzen should make the roster. So, but I'm, but I'm, I'm picking apart words that I had an opportunity to hear. And one of that was last year. Josh Sargent played on the worst team in the Premier League last year, playing against it. players that were far better than him. What does that have to do with this year and right now? And if that's the case, Haji Wright's in form, Ricardo Pepe's in form, Jesus Ferreira, not in form well, right so, now. So, and so we're deciding, we're picking and choosing right. current form, versus historical implication versus Son Sean Johnson, who's been part of the part of it all since day one. Okay, okay. What we should have done, and, and I think we're emotional, so I'm kind of forgetting my <laughs> yeah, checklist. I'm of emotional. What I should do as a proper host, we should have named the team first. So there's 26 players going to the U.S. men's national team with them to the mm -hmm. World Cup here that started in 12 days, which is crazy. So we got Horvath, Johnson, and Turner. We've talked about that in goal. Cameron Carter-Vickers, Serginho Dest, Aaron Long, Shaq Moore... Big surprise there. Tim Ream, welcome back, my friend. Anthony Robinson, Joe Scally, only three caps for the team. Mm -hmm. He is going to his first World Cup at 19 years old. DeAndre Yedlin rounds out the defenders. Oh, no, excuse me. We have Walker Zimmerman, of course, and, and he'll round out the defenders. We took nine defenders. I had 10, and we have nine, my guess is. So in midfield, here's an interesting one for midfield, Heath. Brendan Aronson is being listed as a midfielder when... Arguably, he's more of a winger, but okay, we'll take that. You got Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams, Luca De La Torre, even though he is hurt and has a hamstring issue, gets the call. You got Weston McKinney, Eunice Musta, and Christian Roldan from the Seattle Sounders. It seemed like he was on that very outside looking in, but he finds himself back in the circle. I think he might even replace maybe a Paul Ariola, Malik Tillman. We'll have to wait and see. And then up top, you got Jesus Ferreira, Jordan Morris, another Sounders player, Christian Pulisic, Gio Reyna, Josh Sargent, Tim 
Wea and Haji Wright. So no Jordy Pifok and no Ricardo Pepe. There's crazy. a lot to get into here, but That's I just crazy. wanted to make sure we named that team. All right, we've done the goalkeepers. Obviously, some shock and awe with those selections. Let's go to the defenders now, Heath Pierce. Cameron Carter Vickers, center back, not a big surprise. I think that uh, in certain matchups, certain situations, certain teams we're playing against, he could be the yeah, right he's guy. Fine. To we play. predicted that. We wanted yeah, no that. problem. We wanted Sergio Dest are starting right back. No big yep. surprise there. We just got to make sure he's healthy. You have Aaron Long, who is, it seems like, at 30 years old. This is it. This is going to be his last hurrah at the World Cup level, but, but hadn't really been playing well since coming back from an Achilles injury, but seemed to have been given every opportunity to not make the team. Or well, to make the I don't team. think and, anybody and took his spot either. Nobody went out there. That's and took fair. His spot. That's fair. Yeah. So I mean, even hung if you're a veteran, enough. even if you're a veteran, Jimmy, if someone's not going to come out there, whether that's uh, Eric Palmer Brown or Mark McKenzie, yes, they both had solid outings at times, but neither of them really said, "I'm going to take this guy out," who obviously has the trust of the coach. So while form is a thing, I also think nobody really came and snatched it from him. No, that's true. And for everybody joining us on CBS Sports HQ, what's up? Great to see you. We're talking about the defensive part of this U.S. men's national team that's going to the World Cup. There are some surprises, mainly Shaq Moore, who mm. played in the Spanish second division last season. Now he plays for Nashville and MLS. A bit surprised with this one. I thought that maybe Reggie Cannon would get the nod over him, given his experience and, and that he's actually played with the U.S. in the last six friendlies. Mm -hmm. Whereas Shaq Moore, I don't think, has been a part of the team for quite some time. I like Shaq Moore. And when he fell out of the equation, I would just kind of stop talking about him because if they didn't want to rate him or give him a chance, then then I just assume they're, they've moved on past him. But there he is. And what I do like about him, if we're looking for little chemistry things, and if we do want to start him at right back or at least bring him in at any point, he plays with Walker Zimmerman, who should start for us in the back line, who also oh, plays man. for Nashville. Now it's like, now we're I'm talking about saying. Rodon and Morris making the team because they're best friends, Jimmy, like because they text each other at night. I mean, I get I get the rhythm of it. But where was but, but, Shaq Moore up I, until this Okay, I get it. I'm just trying to look at the silver linings. But I go, okay, keep going, keep going. No, no, I'm, what I'm saying is where was Shaq Moore up until this last camp, right? Look how many right backs we're bringing to this. Yes, Joe Scali can play on the left. Yes, Serginio Desk can cover on the left. But where, where, like, what is the purpose behind this? Was it because he got called into the MLS only camp or the guys that were out of season and impressed in that time where Greg Berhalter got this gut feeling of, man, I can trust this guy? Because clearly Greg hadn't trusted him uh, prior. We had a depth chart of Serginio Dest when he's not available, DeAndre Yedlin when he's not available, Reggie Cannon. And Cannon could also play a little bit of center back. You and can. then you have Shaq Moore. And so. That's Dude, another I would go, actually, I'm I would go Joe Scali. Yeah. We had Joe Scally before we had Shaq Joe Moore. Joe Scally, exactly. Sha Joe Scally was potentially, we were talking about him with Yedlin of like, maybe he can slide in. Maybe it's too late. But now you've got Shaq Moore. What is it you're, like, do you think that there's just, we're going to play with five right backs? Again, this is a question for Greg Berhalter. You've had all of this time. We've, we've capped so many players. We've gotten so many players, good looks developed, so many players over this time. Shaq Moore, it must be a gut instinct or must have been impressed so much in this camp. And I'm not saying he didn't have a good season, but he clearly wasn't part of it. And you can't tell me a guy like that who I think has around 12 or 15 caps or whatever. Greg Hatt was like, oh yeah, I get this player. I don't need to bring him in because I know what he's capable of. That's just, to me, that's one of those variables where I'm just like, does it make sense? And I'm not saying there's another player should have gone. I, I think that's too many right backs, period. But that means if you're going to take that many right backs, whether it was Reggie Cannon or Shaq Moore, you are sacrificing somewhere else on the field of your 26 players. And so that, to me, was a little bit of an odd one. I, I'll say this about Shaq Moore. I would, or, let, me, let, me, let me take a step back. When I look at our five right backs, there's two that you mentioned in Scally and Des that can play at the left side. And we don't have any cover for Anthony Robinson on the left side. So one of them... If Anthony gets hurt, uh, Tim Reem now. Over. Tim Reem now, by the Tim way, Reem could, could do a could little play bit of left back. But, but even he would raise his hand and say he prefers to play in the middle than out oh, wide. Yeah, of course. Isolated. But, yeah, but of course. he has played left back. He's sure. spent early and, days at left back. Yeah. And he's our only other left footer. So we have two left footed players in our defense. <laughs> That's Tim Reem, who plays center back. And we have Anthony Robinson, who plays left back. Thankfully, if we're looking at the chemistry vibes again, they both play for Fulham and they've both been playing pretty well despite that i will give you that i will give you Jimmy. Okay, i'll give you that chemistry i'm just one. saying yeah. okay fine but we don't get to make shaq a moore. team because of that listen shaq moore yeah i like he's got more similarities i think to Sergio Dest than maybe yeah. anybody else i think he can get forward i think he's he can explosive. whip in a good cross Tactical. he's explosive i think yep. that uh he could he can he could probably unbalance a team i'm assuming this is if he gets in but for me this is the biggest surprise for sure we have the big surprise of Zach Steffen not being part of the goalkeepers, which is crazy to me that he's not in. I'm still trying to process what that means to me.
going through an emotional spell at the moment, just thinking about it. We haven't even got to Ricardo Pepe yet. And then Shaq Moore is the biggest surprise for me in this collection of players. But because for everybody that doesn't know, they've expanded the World Cup rosters from normally 23, historically 23 to 26. We got three guys we can throw out there for the vibes. So maybe he's the vibes guy. And if he gets to yeah. play, maybe he proves his worth. I will raise my hand that when I played in the World Cup in 2006, I'm pretty sure I got selected for my vibes. I got fun <laughs> energy. I'm a you good played, hard worker. Though. You played. It's not I like you're a, play. you're a locker room guy. I, I started as a locker room guy. Ended up getting to play and prove myself, which was great. And I'm glad that I had that opportunity and that the coaching staff trusted me to go out there in a big moment and, yeah. and uh, prove their confidence in me. But I probably started as a vibes guy. So, so... I'm not going to discount any vibes, guys, but because they expanded the roster, I think Shaq Moore right now Jimmy. is just going to be a passenger Jimmy. for this. He's got great tickets Jimmy. for the World Cup. What? He's, 20, he's not like he's like 18 or something. He's 24 years old <laughs> just, or 26 just, maybe. He I think, could. He could be part of 2026. Look, I Haji it. Wright, Haji Wright, that's the gut instinct. We go back to 2010, right? We talked about Hercules Gomez, Edson Buttle. Like these are guys where gut instinct, when so, I get that feeling and I'm on the sideline and I'm Greg Berhalter and I'm pacing okay, back in my okay. technical area and we are down a goal and I go, who can I, who over there has got that magic touch right now that they believe that they can score in any moment in any game? That's your Haji right. I will give you that. Now, I completely disagree that Ricardo Pepe uh, so, so, uh, shouldn't have been left off, but that's your guy. At least you can go on form okay, and say, okay. that's, that's the one I throw in the mixer for the Hail Mary. Okay, so, but, but I think to your point and where we should explore for everybody watching, Make sure you hit us up in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or uh, drop us a hit on Twitter at ISWT Pod. Drop us a follow too. We'd love that. What I'll say is, I think what I'm picking up from what you're putting down, the underlying message is, why not just leave Shaq Moore at home and bring a Ricardo Pepe, right? Because if you're going to sacrifice a spot, we don't necessarily need a Shaq Moore. We've got that covered because we've got now five mm -hmm. right backs. And bring somebody that has proven that. It feels like to me, when I think about the Ricardo Pepe, situation and him not being included which we're going to get into a little bit more and you think about zach stefan not being included from a goalkeeper it's like it's like greg knew he was listen listen it Jimmy, like this it's, isn't about shaq moore it's not about shaq moore though it's about the fact that we have he is number four in our current world cup roster for right back position. i get it and so that so we is him and get another striker for? It's not, I get it. I'm, I'm super stoked for Shaq Moore. I'm so proud of the work that he's put in and the player that he's become sure, of course but do you need four right back no you don't and do that's do you what feel like, about. okay, let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll let me rephrase it because we're using Shaq Moore as a symbol here for, for the conversation we want to have. And I... All right. Man, that's a feisty pair of soccer fans for the United States. How about that? And fans this time around because not playing in it, obviously. But we've got the United States guys uh, playing this season in the World Cup returning and facing off against Wales in the very first game of group stage, Group B, we got Wales, then England, then Iran. All matches at two o'clock Eastern time. The World Cup, less than two weeks away. And the guys who have been there, done that, on In Soccer We Trust, gonna take you through the whole thing as we finally make our triumphant return to World Cup play. Conrad, Davies, and Pierce, In Soccer We Trust, Watch now, scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to the podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.